Hey, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Oh, hi there. <clears throat> hey. Just you and me so far. Oh, okay. I, I like, did you, did you clean up uh, your office? Um, no, I think it's just that the light's different. No, I didn't. They it looks good. It looks really good. Like everything looks very, very neat. Well, I guess, yeah, actually the house cleaner came today. So maybe that's what you're saying. So I guess maybe I just put, did put stuff in stacks. Nice. Let's see, I'm gonna. <coughs> Excuse right. me. We're going ahead and recording now. We're recording, so. Just so I don't forget. I haven't heard from anybody. I don't know who's coming. Hey, did you start lifeguarding today? No, not not today. I actually start uh, tomorrow morning. Oh, oh, well, it's gonna rain, isn't it? Is it oh, I'm a, oh, is it? I didn't. I didn't I know. I think so. I think. Oh, here's Maureen. Okay, all right. We have a quorum. That's good. If if it is raining, we'll uh, we'll make the best of it. That's it. Yeah. No. Hi, Maureen. Hello. Hi, Maureen. I had to get everything set up. Yep, that's okay. I think we'll wait a few minutes. I'm hoping somebody else will join um more and maybe i haven't heard from her but and then maybe uh some members of the public all right here's somebody mark someone uh, mark Yeah, Maureen, it's it's nice to see you. I I I I don't I think we missed you at the last mi meeting, right? Yeah, I was uh, under a tornado watch out in um, Missouri, I think. So there was no. Uh, we were traveling for a couple of months. So oh, no. okay. We had no. We had absolute. The winds were so bad. There was no uh, connections at all, any place. No kidding. Yeah, it was fun. Not. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> so it sounds like a wild time for sure. It was. It was the rain was vicious and it was uh it was a real wild couple of days. But we survived. Good. No, nothing you can't handle, right? That's right. We're <laughs> tough. We're tough. Tough in the Winglanders. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we took off for a couple of months and uh, did a lot of uh, national parks and things, visited some relatives, that sort of thing. That's, that's, that's wonderful. Did you, say you, you didn't go yellow, to Yellowstone, did you? Well, actually, we tried to, but the funny part is the entrance we were trying to get into was closed. It didn't list it at the time when I first was looking it up. Uh -oh. It's been a three-hour ride to get to the entrance that we could get into. And of course, another three hours back. So we never got in there. <clears throat> but, um, um, you know, things as is, um, looks like nobody's getting in there for a while. Right, I, I know it. Yeah, it looks pretty Yeah, bad. it's pretty, pretty. We yeah. still got to see some, a um, couple of grizzlies and a um, couple of herds of elk and a couple of herds of, oh, oh, nice. of um, elk and um, bison. So we got a little bit of um, uh, wildlife. That was nice. Yep. Oh, good. We got Nicole here. Hey. Hi, Nicole. Oh, she's mute. Hi, Eileen. Hi, everyone. Hi. Welcome. 
<laughs> All right, so we're dismissing um, Lauren. I didn't hear from her one way or the other. So why don't we go ahead and get started. Um, Let's say hi to Melissa as well. Melissa's here. I think she's muted. Yeah, welcome, Melissa and Pat and Mark. So thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Good evening. Hi. Yeah. Um, the last time, let's see, we who was here last time? The uh, Kevin and Lauren and me. So um, we had this discussion last time, and I think I have found out since, based on what I saw at the town council meeting that if you are not at the meeting, you shouldn't vote on the minutes. So this time, um, Nicole and Maureen are here, but they were not at the meeting. So I, we, until, unless Lauren jo joins us, I won't ask for approval of the minutes. All right, but we do have a quorum, that's good. Um, so, um, Nicole, I don't know if you had a chance to see the minutes, we had a, a discussion last time and a proposal from the Lake Nipponick and Action Focus Team. Were you able to see that? Okay, all right, good. Yep. Um, so let me go through the old business before we get to that. Um, the, we, one of the discussion items we had the meeting before was whether to send a letter to the Community and Economic Development Committee of the Town Council about the proposed discontinuance of that portion of Lakeside Drive. And we had decided we wanted, we wanted to do that. And so I just wanted to update you all that I did send it. Um, and um, is it, Pat, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I had, yes, a question, I had a question for you, Pat. At the last town council meeting, um, when you spoke about the tree board, um, I think that's, that was when you mentioned something about the abandoned, the uh, discontinuance that, that that was not before the council. I didn't bring that up the last time I spoke about the trees. Right. Did, I mean, there wasn't, a, as I haven't seen anything indicating they were going to, to, to take that up at any time or that the, that, that committee has. No, I haven't either. I haven't either. Okay, that's, that's all I wanted to check because when you said that, yeah. it made me wonder if there's something had been uh, proposed that I had missed or something that I Not that I'm aware of. I've been watching and I haven't seen anything. Okay. Okay. All right, so the other thing I just wanted to update you on is um, the Wine and Meadows. You know, what, the, what we've been doing um, with that property is trying to work with the Wildlands Trust to see how we can partner with them. And we are partnering with them, not, we're not trying still, but um, to provide access to their land, the, their conservation land via the town land, which uh, the town conservation land is very restricted due to the wellhead protection requirements, but it does provide a place for parking along the road that exists there and a, um, a, an access uh, trail that would connect with the Wildlands Trust property. And I've talked with a couple of people, I talked with Michael Dutton about this a long time ago and he was you know, he's generally nodded uh, his assent. And um, I talked with Steve Sobel a number of times because I thought maybe we should go to the Conservation Commission because the conservation land is under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. And Steve that didn't ever seem to be um, very excited about that prospect and that, you know, that they generally are just dealing with the regulatory approval um, projects that come before them on their agenda and don't seem to be have a lot of interest in open space land. Um, so I, what I decided is, is talking with Wildlands Trust and what we need, really need to do is get something on paper just have them design and they're gonna do all the design work. Wildlands Trust is gonna do all the design work on the trails and figure out where it would run and you know what the parking would look like. They think the kiosk that exists there now is in good shape. There's nothing, there's no information on it, but it's a structure. It's been there for 20 years. Um, and so they're gonna go ahead and do that. And then I think at that point, when we have something in, uh, something in paper, some kind of a design, some kind of an estimate of costs, um, which don't sound like they will be substantial. And, and I expect that a Wildlands Trust is gonna pick up some portion of the costs. Um, 
if not all. I think at one point they were talking about doing it all at all. But so that's that's where it stands. And um, in support of that idea today, I went out just before I just got home, like at 630 um, with Mitch Hemmings. If you remember, he came and gave us a presentation a few months ago. He had been out at the property and he had a whole lot of slides and talked about the, the he gave us a good description of the land. And he was out there today with another volunteer and I met them um, at a little after five. And so that's what he's in the process of doing. I mean, we looked at where the where we thought the parking would go, um, questions about whether it would need gravel. You know, we'll have to see over the course of a couple of years whether it would require gravel or whether grass would be adequate. And then we just kind of bushwhacked through um, parts of the the area where they thought the trail would go to access the Wildlands Trust property and then ultimately the river. I had to leave. I didn't want to miss this meeting. <laughs> So they were still still going at it um, and basically trying to plot out a loop, um, figure out where, where they would have to put bog boards because there are definitely wet areas, but not extensive. It, it, it seems like it would be it's going to be fairly limited uh, to area to that that leads to the uplands. And so anyway, it was it was really fun to be out there. It was kind of exciting, and I think this is a really um, I don't know. I think this is like the most positive project we've been able to get accomplished. Well, well, it's not accomplished yet, but even even on the horizon, I feel like this is more concrete than, than anything we've been able to do so far. So I'm excited about that. I don't know just how long it'll take him to get it uh, on paper and then we'll figure out the next steps. I, I feel like I need to talk to the water department um, just because I wanna make sure they know what's going on over there. It's because they own the adjacent land on the other side. The town land is split between the water department land and the conservation land. And uh, I, Wildlands Trust is very excited about this because they've had that property for a long, long time and have not been able to provide public access to it because their property doesn't abut any a road anywhere or not an accessible road. So it, it's a really big deal for them as well. And I've, I'm also talking with the land director um, at uh, Wildlands Trust Scott McFarland, who's been working with us on the Hanson Farm property, because I think there might be some other parcels of land around that area that um, it might be worth talking to a landowner or two to see if they might be willing to um, put a restriction on, on some additional parcels. Um, and Scott's working a lot in that area on the other side of the river where the Perkins property is and um, working with the, the, de the developer there on getting this, uh, trails along the river where they set back the, the houses from. So anyway, so that's that's all I wanted to report is just that um, there is some, some work going on there and uh, really boots on the ground kind of stuff instead of just talking and paperwork. So uh, that's it. So. Anyway, anybody, uh, the next time, um, he's, he's going to be out there a few times. So if anybody else is interested in going out there at some point, let me know. I'm going to ask a question. I don't know if this is the place or not. Um, on, on the trip that we just took, we came, we were in a park. And, and are they still, they, they had a really nice kiosk. Mm -hmm. um, and are they still trying to make, find a design that's going to be, solid that the kids can't tear down um that the boy scouts or whomever it is is going to build and make a universal one for all the parks no i mean that's not in the process in, in the works right now partly because anything that's going to happen um is likely to happen at styles and heart first because they've got so many grant applications in for so many elements of that park so um our thought was that there was no point in really moving ahead in us trying to come up with some kind of a design when Styles and Hart is going to going to create going to have the money to create something for that park, and so then that should probably become the universal design for all the parks. Who's who's going ahead with that design? I I just took a couple of pictures. I didn't know if they wanted to see what they had down or what they had in Florida that. Seem pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just, I think that they'll, they will be hiring a consultant to do a lot of the design work on Styles and Heart. I mean, they've, they've applied for a lot of money for that property, so I think that's supposed to be the flagship of the Bridgewater Park. Okay. 
so that that should set the standard for you know what the signs would look like. That said, Maureen, that that um, that kiosk that's out at, at Wyman Meadows has been there for 20 years or 15 maybe, and nobody's destroyed it. Well, oh, that's good. Hard, hard to believe, actually, but yeah, probably because they didn't know it's down there. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, and, and you know, in the summer, you can certainly, I mean, in, in the winter, you can certainly see it from the road, but you know, maybe just nobody, maybe because the water department goes in and out of there, um, yeah. you know, that their the property's fairly um, isolated from, although, you know, there were, there was evidence of deer hunters um, there. And the last time we were there, there were deer hunters. I think you were with me when, yeah, 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 yeah. right. So, yeah. I mean, at least there's hunters using the property. We know that, but whether there's any vandals, apparently they, they didn't go after the kiosk if there, if there were. One thing I noticed today, and I, I, I thought that there's a new fence. I think the water department has put a new fence much closer to the kiosk than where it used to be. Oh. Um, um, Mitch wasn't sure, he, but it looked new to me and I, I just don't remember it. I thought we were able to, to walk up that road or drive up that road quite a ways before, the, before there was a, a barrier. So where yeah. the water department building is, but anyway. Um, okay, so is that answer your question, Maureen? Yep. yep. Okay, all right. Um, so the next item I had on here was posting parks information on the town website. We talked last time about uh, the need to check. Well, first of all, for uh, for Lauren was going to look at the town website and just figure out where we think the notices no, notice should go up for information about park should go probably should be multiple locations and try to figure out who can help us figure out where that goes. Um, Steve Sobel had said each department makes its own decisions about what to po what to post and where. So somebody's got to help us sort out where it should go, but we ought to probably decide where we think it ought to go and then they can take it or not. Um, but I don't know, I haven't talked with um, Lauren about that, so I don't know. Um, okay, so let's see, uh, Nicole, free committee. Yes. There's so been some Maureen activity. And I, Maureen and I actually attended the tree committee meeting that, that you did not do. When was that? Like one day last week? Maureen, when, what day did we do that? Uh, I don't know. Was it I don't need that. You were on it, weren't you? Or am I, <laughs> I was there. Yeah. yeah, you were there. Yeah. Anyway, do, what has there been? A, did you go to one today, Nicole? Was there one today? Yeah, I don't know anything about what there was last week. Um, Last week it was, let's see, it was Pat, Maureen, me, um, Ray, Shirley, Shirley, and Ray Shirley, uh, Bill, was and it? Bill Malpe, and yeah. uh, Michael Dutton for a short time, and Jennifer. Oh. And one of the questions was whether you were going to be able to participate or not. So you went to today. So that's Sounds yeah, great. that's, I think I didn't participate because I knew nothing about that. <laughs> well, you know, that was one of the reasons I got on that. Oh, that was one of the reasons I got on that. Um, I went to that committee meeting because I, I had heard Shirley and Ray speaking at the town council. Oh, yes. And they, maybe one of them mentioned your name. And so I wanted to go to that uh, meeting to find out why, you know, if um, if you were still on it or if you weren't, or and mm. I tried I tried tried to nominate Maureen if you couldn't if you weren't going to be on it um, that if we needed another representative from open space. But M Michael said no that it didn't have to be. He wasn't trying to appoint people to represent committees. And um, so anyway, I we talked about the fact that you were a really good resource for that committee and we hope that you would be on and so it sounds like you still are ah that makes sense okay so then ray reached out to me last week probably after that meeting yes. to me it sounded like it was just discussed at town council he, or yeah he had mentioned you know that he was really pushing for the, and it kind of helped to come to full circle. Now I better understand that the planning board really initially, initially really pushed for the tree committee because yeah. they were able, um, they actually had received some funds um, from projects, you know, development projects that needed to remove many trees and had <clears throat> 
started um, a but you know money that they basically contributed to plant new trees in the town. Right. So, you know, I think that there's many other reasons and many other folks in the town that want to, to have a tree um, committee, but that's really a, like a driver for it um, and really trying to be able to get this thing formulated, um, you know, as quickly as possible so that, you know, there can be protocols in place and, um, you know, tasks at hand for the committee to do. So with the meeting today, just kind of focused on really brainstorming, you know, how to how to move the ad hoc committee into a more permanent you know committee and discussing you know what what the responsibilities of the I guess they're going to potentially call it a tree board once it becomes mm -hmm. official um, the responsibilities um, you know roles and kind of the tasks that they would be re, you know responsible for you know which type of people should be on the committee was discussed. Um, you know, ideas about like needing a tree warden, you know, there was a lot of, um, you know, conversation. So the notes will be pulled together from today's uh, meeting and we're going to be meeting every two weeks yeah. to really get this moving until it's officially signed, sealed and, you know, a tree board is officially, I guess, approved yeah. by town council. Yeah, so to fill you in just a little more, I, I think um, two town council meetings, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Pat, um, I think two council meetings ago, Shirley Krasinski spoke to the, you know, the tree board issue, the tree committee issue. And then at the next town council meeting, um, Ray Ajemian and um, Marilee Hunt mm -hmm. and James Hayes Bohannon, who is a geographer who works at the college, a, a professor of um, geography, who's um, knowledgeable about trees, they all three testified that we needed a tree, a tree board. Oh, yeah, great, good. Yeah, yeah. so it was just, to, yeah, J Ray, I think, was kind of the driver that the planning mm -hmm. board needs the guidance. They, yes. you know, they have the money and they need the guidance. They want to know what, you know, and one thing specifically that I mentioned is Ray kept talking about the, you know, the planning board's needs um, about how to, you um, give guidance on what to plant. And uh, I, I mentioned that I knew you had, had tried to emphasize the fact that it's not just what to plant, it's how to save existing trees. And yep. that, you know, part of, what, part of what was driving your thinking, I know, is what happened out there at the Perkins property. And yes. looking for guidance about how to avoid that sort of thing too. So it isn't just a matter of, you know, how to work with the Department of Public Works to plant trees in new developments or along roadsides or whatever it's how to preserve existing trees Pat, you yeah have hand up. go ahead Pat. I... oh thank you uh, i i hope it's okay i'm not a member of your committee <laughs> <laughs> i just wanted to say uh, nicole had some very good suggestions this afternoon and where this is just an ad hoc committee i hope that nicole can be on the permanent committee and one of the uh, positions that was her, her an engineer was not brought up so maybe she can be a member as a town resident so you know they were they were naming different types mm -hmm. of professions that they could use on the committee mm -hmm. and Nicole had the most important things to say in my opinion today mm -hmm. Well, I did pipe up and say that I believe a, a representative from the open space committee should be uh, on the committee. So that, that was that, a little bit self um, self supporting. True. But I did mention we don't have many other committee. We don't have many other boards or committees in this town that are environmentally focused. Right. I mean, right. open space right. is besides conservation commission, you know, is one of the, you know, one of the key ones. So I do believe, true. you know, true. we should have a seat at the table. And we also discussed having one or two members of the public too. So if, you know, there would be room for me or someone like me that's really just advocating, um, right. you know, right. I, I mean, I, they are going to be really looking hard. And we talked about definitely having an arborist and or a landscape architect on the committee, because we do need people who are very knowledgeable about planting right. trees, protecting yeah. trees, maintaining trees. Right. So those are going to be critical, um, you know, people to find in our community. And I'm, I don't, yeah. you know, I don't know yeah. if they exist. It's uh, very important because it, no one is as concerned about protection as probably Nicole or myself that were in attendance today. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the chair chairman is concerned about 
you know, mitigation and, you know, yeah. like, like, oh, I want to get money for the trees that cut down. We don't want the trees to be cut down. Mm -hmm. So that has to be worked on. And, and they're talking about just municipal properties. It's got to be everywhere. Uh, you know, we have to protect uh, ancient trees, uh, the size of trees that can't be cut down, uh, the percentages, as Nicole mentioned. So that's just my feelings, but I'm very, very serious about that. It's not just, you know, mitigation, because that's after the fact. That's too late. We need, we need someone outside the bubble that's not an engineer or, or, or concerned about finances, per se. We need someone that just looks at it from a fresh perspective, you know, that's not those things, because there's no extra pressure or, you know, an, an alternative view that might cloud people's judgment. So I think that's so important that we need people that are just unbiased in that regard and just and they're just an advocate the just for representatives are you thinking kevin because is that what you said pat or somebody suggested there should be a couple of citizens that's right they, yeah. okay. they did say one or two residents i'm not okay. sure how that will end up but they did suggest that so we need we need a couple of tree huggers is what it comes down <laughs> to well they suggested pat would be perfect yeah <laughs> i i uh would love to do something like that because I feel that I uh, have enough courage to make a difference. And I just resigned from the Board of Health, so I'm free to do oh. what I want to do. All right. Go for it, Pat. I think, you, yeah. I think you'll yeah. be fantastic at it. Well, well, we'll see if they even want me. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll, they'll want you, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. That sounds good. So Nicole, you are you are going to be on it. It sounds like I mean you're you're on the you're on the ad hoc committee right now, and they're determining who they will need for the the, the tree board. But yeah, yep. So for the next few months, I'm, or however long it takes, I'm definitely on the ad hoc okay. committee. Um, so that'll um, be it, yeah, I'll keep everyone worth, updated. Would it be worthwhile for the open space committee to advocate for itself that we believe an open space committee member should be on it? Yeah, I think that would be helpful if we do write a letter saying a representative from the Open Space Committee should be represented. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Yeah, and in, in, in our brainstorm session, there was a couple other things that came up, like even, um, you know, building a tree farm on, it would have to be town property, or, you know, obviously that would need to be current open space of some sort to begin to grow trees that could be, you know, larger diameter trees that have time to kind of grow and then could be, you know, could be planted um, right. rather than the dinky little, you know, skinny little twig that, you know, gets planted sometimes, you know, in new construction. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, Nicole, it's funny, like I went, to, when, when we were doing the, the tour with Hanson Farm, like way in the back in, in Hanson Farm. Oh the, yeah, they have. The, the, they told us that, yeah, I'm not sure if you heard that as well, but there was like a part of Hanson Farm that was once, once upon a time a tree farm, which I thought was very interesting, but it's like way in the back, but it's like a whole area, you know. But I'm, I mean, I'm not sure if they would do that today per se, but it's going to be in a trust. But yeah, that was that was it at one point. You know. All right. Well, that's great. I'm glad you were there, Nicole. All right. So, um, and you're going to meet every other week, you said. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right, um, so new business. So Lakeshore Development is filed um, what's called, what is it, four, step four? Is that what it's called? Is it step? Do I have it right? Whatever. Um, oh, in the, in like the, in like the phases of. Yeah, the phase four, that's it. It's phase, phase four. four. Phase yes. four, that's right. So the, it's a huge project. Um, I sent out the link to it. I don't know if any of you had an opportunity to, to look at it. I'll ask, um, Melissa, do you want to summarize it? I think you're probably more familiar with it than I am. Just go, just go through the, the list of what's proposed. Um, in, in addition to the restaurant, which we've already talked about in this committee before, but um, the, the restaurant we, is, is part of this proposal but the rest of it is, is the bigger part. So Melissa, that, I'd appreciate it if you just run through that. Sure, yeah, happy to, happy to do that, Eileen. So 
Um, within phase four of Lakeshore development, there are a number of, I guess, sub phases that involve different parts of the site. So the northern site is where the restaurant would be. Um, and then there's the eastern site and that is on the, so that's on the, well, it's on the eastern side of the property and fronting Route 104. And this is part of their um, preferred, they had to give a couple of alternatives. One was no build, one was zoning compliant, one was low impact. And the one that I'm mentioning right now is their um, preferred option. <clears throat> so within this preferred option on Route 104, on that Eastern site would be a, um, like a short stay hotel, I think a hundred and something rooms, maybe more, and a uh, condominium complex. And then way in the back near the um, access development, I believe would be an over 55 and I'm not sure if it's like assisted living or rental, but some sort of over 55 with another couple hundred um, units. Uh, in addition to that, they want to take part of that Marriott parking lot and turn it into a drive-through cafe of some sort. And I believe that there's an, another thing that they want to put in behind the new office building that would be some sort of residential thing um, that I can't remember right now. And I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. Adult but, retirement. <clears throat> right. What, what is that? Adult retirement. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And so, um, you know, obviously um, the, the restaurant, which is slated to be somewhere in the vicinity of four to 6,000 square feet, including a deck uh, and a number of parking areas uh, would be really detrimental to the, the lakefront, as we all, I think, could agree on. Um, the other sites, particularly this eastern site, uh, they're actually going to, if going forward with this, destroying two archaeological sites out there, which, um, from what I can see, there's a memorandum of under a memorandum of agreement with the Mass Historical Commission with regard to this. Now I'm not sure if there's like an out there where maybe it could these sites could be preserved. Or from what I've seen, <clears throat> um, it looks like the sites would be destroyed if this were to go forward. And obviously, the wetland area out there on that eastern side is significant. And they're proposing work within the 100 foot buffer zones. So there, there's a lot of potential damage to the watershed. Um, so there's a lot of concern about that, a lot of concern about phosphorus and these kinds of things that can um, contaminate the water and cause um, bad things to, to the, the watershed and, and the lake. So, so that's the summary. The deadline for comments was. Um, uh, Mon no, Tuesday. And um, yeah, so I believe that um, MEPA has something like seven days to review the comments. And then they have to get back to Claremont with some sort of determination as to uh, whether or not they can file for this FSEIR, um, which is, I guess, an environmental impact report. So We'll find out more probably within the next, I would say, um, 10 to 20 days. Um, Nicole, are you uh, very familiar with the MEPA process? Yes, a little bit. Um, it is a very extensive um, environmental review process, and I believe it will and should cover historic review as well. So I, well, perhaps there's an indication that they intend to disrupt an archeological site. I would be surprised if it was allowed, if it was protected. So maybe we, I'd need to do a little bit more research to better understand that, but, you know, historic review should be 
um, you know, part of this in, 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 you know, in the end, perhaps that, you know, may be beneficial to minimize disruption and how much, you know, so there's the environmental factors that they will need to protect and mitigate properly. And there would, you know, be historical considerations. Um, there's other triggers as well, but it sounds like they're already going through this process. It's always things like traffic, environmental. Right. Yeah. There's so there's there's different categories, historic, um, you know, things like noise, you know, many different factors. Yeah, and I think they they had a whole list of what they were triggering. I mean, there's a thousand new parking places uh, proposed, um, 130,000 uh, gallons per day of water usage. I yep. Think. Um, a, you know, the environmental, um, uh, the EEC, the ACEC is one mm -hmm. that triggers this review. So, what the Maureen and I were there, um, and Pat also for the site visit with the MEPA representative, um, Purvi Patel. And um, I, I don't know a lot about MEPA. I mean, I, I worked at DEP for 13 years and I, I would hear about it from time to time with different projects, but I, I really don't know very much about it at all. And my understanding from the questions I asked Purvi is that basically it's, um, it's not a permitting agency and it will require mitigation um, for any things that trigger its review. But my impression is that they won't, they won't ever, they won't ever say, no, you can't do that. Um, that maybe the mitigation becomes prohibitive. You know, maybe, maybe what they would say is in order to mitigate, you know, you'd have to do such and such. But they talked about the fact like during the last uh, review. Uh, the mitigation was you had to pick up the, the turtles that were endangered and move them to another area and then fence in the area you were working so the turtles wouldn't come back to where they were supposed to be. So that was the mitigation for that particular um, area of concern. In this case, they said there are two endangered species of plants on the riverfront, on the, I'm sorry, on the lakefront where they're trying to put the restaurant. And I don't rem remember what they said might be the mitigation for that, but they, oh no, I know. They seem to be saying that the, that the, they had already talked to the, the, the uh, state agency that's responsible for plants and they didn't, the, the guy from um, the developer's representative said they didn't think they were gonna have to do anything with respect to those plants and it didn't seem to be a concern. So I, I don't exactly know what to expect from MEPA. I actually went and tried to read a few of their um, decisions, but I, I actually, I, I couldn't figure out how to access any of them. So I, I was just trying to get a sense of what they do, what their opinions look like. Um, and I think I misspoke about the historic being part of MEPA. I think the mass historic, it might be a separate process. Okay. Well, I am good. seeing that form that, um, you know, basically the kind of the, at least the triggers which have to do with land and structures and transportation and water and wastewater. Um, yeah, so I don't see anything in some of that, you know, some of that early documentation that was part of that press release. I don't see anything about historic. Um, okay, yeah. I, I do have a question for Melissa, if I could ask. Um, what, Melissa, what, what's, the, um, what's the two sites that are gonna be disruptive disrupted here what's the which ones specifically are they so it's and pat can you help me here because i i don't have my paperwork in front of me but there are two There's sites the, yeah the bassett, the bassett and then the tome road t-o-m-b what is that pat the oh the, the two plants you're asking no the no. the archaeological history. sites oh the, the archaeological oh okay all right right yeah and what are they? Are they Native American or? They're, I, I, we're trying to get information, specific information about that. It's been referenced that it could be Viking and it could be Indian. So I, I don't know, there's gotta be some facts somewhere. Uh, we'll have to find out if we're gonna try to use that as a good argument. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, it's been difficult to find out information about the actual sites and the, his, the history of it, um, yeah. but. We're, we're trying. Could you repeat what it is? I didn't quite catch it. What was the name of it, Pat? The Bassett site. Bass, Bassett? Apparently he discovered this, this uh, 
Well, it looks kind of like a cave, but it's been built up and it's been there for probably thousands of years. But and where's that located? It's right behind the park and ride. Park and ride? Oh, park and ride. Oh. And I do not know where the Tome Road is. I'm trying to find that out. And how do you spell that? T O M B, Tome. Oh, okay. Tome. Well, and hopefully the Historic Commission is going to be following those that that issue. I mean, I don't think that that's something that that we would be um, looking at. Um, I'm, I'm really, I'm really, I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. I just, <clears throat> I'm really surprised that Melissa, when you said that the when they said they're going through this environmental study, that it will satisfy the historic, or someone said that it would, it would satisfy the historic. But is that I mean, are they? I'm just one. I'm just. I find it hard to believe that the historic would have would just would just kind of put up their hand and say, "Oh, we're not going to have." Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we really know. I mean, this is very, very preliminary, and um, you know, we'll know more once and when when MEPA makes its decision, which I think is it by the 24th. I think I saw by June 24th. I think they're supposed to issue something. Um, yeah. And, but, there, is, but, there is. Go ahead, Melissa. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. There, there is a, a memorandum of agreement with the Mass Historical Commission and Claremont. There is a paper agreement that was signed with regard to these sites, and with with regard to the treatment, I guess, of the artifacts and the preservation of them. Mm -hmm. So there is some sort of agreement that has been signed. My, what I don't know is if there is also the alternative of just not touching it at all. Um, but there has been some back and forth, clearly, I think, over the years. Okay. Well, I'm, I'd like to suggest that that's just not an area of a, for us to pursue. It just doesn't seem like that's for this committee to talk about. Um, and uh, I, and I don't know whether it precludes the local historic commission from getting involved. Perhaps not. Um, but and I so and I what I, the other thing I don't really know either is that the, I mean all of the permitting stays with the local jurisdiction. I mean this is still going to have to go through zoning and planning board, and I think that's where the the real decision making is going to going to happen. Uh, once uh, based on whatever MEPA does or doesn't do. But I think that it's, that's where the real, um, the real crux of everything is because they do have to have zoning changes to, to implement any of this. And I just pulled out, um, we, those of, uh, Maureen and I went um, on this and they, we picked up these three big maps that they have. And the one of them is the preferred option. And that's the one that includes the um, a new an, an assisted living um, building with 150 units, a residential 55 plus with 225 units, a new hotel with 102 rooms, a new condo with 160, a new condo building with 160 units. And then what they're calling a, is a cafe, but upon further discussion, it sounded like it's basically a Dunkin' Donuts or something that they wanna put in the parking lot of one of the existing buildings. It's gonna be a drive-through um, with, I think it said, you know, 19 parking spaces as well. So, um, uh, and that's, that all, then there's the zoning compliant version. And what they show for that is industrial property. So I'm assuming that right now they are, they have, they are permitted zoning, you know, that they have by right um, ability to put in industrial, they, I think they show like warehouses. Pat, have you looked at that? You got one of those too. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, I said existing warehouse. Pat, well, you're on mute. So the zoning compliant plan shows a, a proposed industrial building of 86,000 square feet on lot six. It shows yeah. a, um, 
uh, another proposed and two proposed retail buildings right on, on Route 104 on the eastern portion. And rather than, um, and then another proposed industrial building. So there are two industrial buildings proposed and retail as opposed to the housing that is zoning non-compliant apparently. Um, yeah. I, I don't, that's all, that's, and then, then there's a third version that they're submitting um, that's reduced building which apparently is not zone, zoning compliant at this point, but it would involve uh, five, 15, 19 single family lots rather than the multiple uh, story buildings or the industrial buildings. So that's that's what they're, they've got now. And, um, you know, I don't know whether even whether MEPA looks at all of those options or it just looks at their preferred option. I'm not even sure what the scope of their review is, so. I think they request a couple of options. And so that's why that's what you're seeing. What you're seeing. Um, right. Yeah, okay. yeah. So the first thing I just wanna mention is, um, um, well, actually there was a Zoom meeting as well. They, uh, MEPA did a Zoom meeting the day before this and I, I was on that and Pat was on it. Um, I'm not sure, Melissa, you were on it too, weren't you? Yeah. And where they just explained kind of the MEPA process some and then, then we did the walkthrough at the site. And so there are huge areas of trees that, that would come down. I mean, they don't appear to be old growth trees in any way, but, but the thing that I really like if they even under, version that the trees may come down anyway. I mean, it, uh, I can't imagine they're gonna be able to build anything in there without taking down significant trees. So I'm not sure that the, the trees aren't doomed to some degree, uh, no matter what they do, that it, uh, it, that's just my take on, on that zoning compliant version where they're gonna put in an 84,000 foot uh, warehouse or industrial complex of some sort. So. I, Eileen, um, wh wh where is this? Uh, where is this located? Where, this this is this is not near the NIP, right? This is yeah, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know where the hotel is over by the uh, Claremont, where Claremont is, the Claremont offices, right across from the NIP on one hundred and four. Yes, on the south yeah. side of one hundred and four. Yeah. Oh, they oh they still want to build behind. It's behind that. It's behind, beside, you know. Yeah, basically, it's, yeah. Yeah. So just expanding the whole front yeah. range there. Yeah. Okay. I was I was looking at mostly on the um, eastern and the southern kind of. They're sort of built out on the on the Rainham side, I, I think. But they want to put the coffee shop over there. So I was a little confused. I, I thought it was at a because I this is bigger than I than I thought it was. I was like, yeah, that's that's a that's a big. I yeah, mean, just, big, just yeah. I mean, just just to share with everyone here really quick. But my cousin lives in East Bridgewater. And he, he lives kind of on a country road, you know, and on the other side of it, there was actually an Indian burial, burial ground. Oh. And it, it's been there for thousands of years, just like this, yeah. these two archaeological sites. And it used to be protected, but they put in like a, a, a very high-end neighborhood across from their house. And now it's all these big houses. So I think, you know, I mean, I don't know who, who's developing all this stuff, but they're they're sneaky like that because I know that they'll if if they ever come across something like that they'll try to fudge the numbers and unless someone like yeah. a committee like us speak yeah. up they're going to yeah. develop it there's no doubt I've seen yeah. it happen yeah. before yeah. with yeah and I mean they're probably going to develop it even if we do speak out is what it amounts to I mean it, it, you know I mean most of these people aren't proposing things that they don't think that they can get approved within the law you know i mean they'll get the law changed if they have to which is what they're trying to do but i mean they're not gonna they're not proposing something that's um totally inconceivable or they they just went right, that far. right. So, we need um, more people to speak up about that yeah we, so we need people to speak for, up. for example they they didn't put the perennial stream on any of their maps yeah it doesn't show and they're, they're saying it's intermittent. Yeah, or, or just yeah. think that no one will pay attention. But I went down and took a video of it, and it's just flowing beautifully in this drought. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, and as you said, Pat, you said it's on the GIS map as, as perennial, right? The mass GIS. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, we've got verification on that. Yeah. It's perennial. Yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, one thing they, I wanted to tell you that that for a reason for they probably did that on yeah. purpose. Yeah, one it's a two hundred foot. Program. Tell you is that um, yeah. Ma when Maureen and I were there, um, I we she and I just kind of discussed what what we could do in terms of comments because the comments were due on the 14th, which was Tuesday. Is that right? Tuesday, yeah. And we didn't have a meeting, of course, before then. I, I didn't feel like we I really had the authority to sum, submit any comments without having a discussion at this um, with this group first. But what I did do is because we had taken a vote at a prior meeting that we thought it was appropriate for this committee to comment on anything related to uh, development on the NIPS Lakeshore or something like that. Um, I thought what I did was I just I pretty much redid the letter that I had sent to the community, community and Economic Development Subcommittee, which we had already approved last meeting. I just sent that again to MEPA. You know, I changed the address and I, I and said that basically the things we had put in that letter about the ACEC uh, area and um, what the impacts of a restaurant on the shore of the lake would be, et cetera, um, and, and just included that. So that, that was the only comment. I did submit that from the Open Space Committee to MEPA, but it specifically dealt with only the restaurant issue and it said what we had said before in the other letter. So I felt that it was okay for me to do that. So I hope you all agree. <laughs> um, anyway, the other, um, the other thing is, that's MEPA, and then I don't really have a sense of where this goes from here. I don't know what the time frame will be for this. I don't know when, whether this is something we're going to have to meet about frequently if we want to make extensive comments. I don't really have a clue at this point. Um, <coughs> I, I think we're going to have to be... Um, circumspect about what we comment on. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. I'm talking too much. I don't think we can comment on everything. If somebody else talk. I really am losing my voice. Let me. <laughs> I mean, I you don't. Know, may... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say there may be another comment period if they're allowed to come forward with this FSCIR after they've addressed all the questions and all the letters and all the comments and all of that, they would come forward with an even bigger, um, more sizable kind of um, <coughs> proposal. And then there would be another comment period, I believe, after that for everyone who wanted to comment. And that would still be at the state level? Yes. Yeah, OK. All right. Were there a lot of people that came to the first public comment? Um, or when you, I know you attended and everything, I, I wasn't sure how many people actually showed up for this one. At the, there were the only members of the public at the site visit were Maureen, Pat, me, and um, who was the other? Um, Jean. Jean. Jean, is that it? Yeah, Jean, what's her last name? Yeah. De Batista. De Batista, who's a Lakeview Drive um, resident. Oh, okay. And then there so were multiple, people. Consult, multiple consultants, all who um, represented the developer. Okay. Yeah. So something like this is a mega multi year, multi permit process, as you say, and it needs to get into the town level as well. So yeah. there will be, it's almost like this is kind of like the only the initial litmus test to see how many. Uh, what they're triggering, um, you know, from state review, but it will go, it, you know, will likely um, get more and more refined and focused based on those different topics that we were talking about, you know, the, the water and the wetlands versus the historic versus traffic. Mm -hmm. So we can get involved in all of the environmental conversations and the trees and the, you know, open space and yeah, and you know, one thing I thought of that I would really like to see that I think would be unique to us 
or though maybe the planning board would consider it is if you know and maybe there's no chance that they're, they're going to get their preferred option but if they're but if so if they're bringing in that many housing units there's no place in this entire complex of open space for the people who live there you know what right. they're bringing all these people yeah. in and what the town is supposed to provide them with a park someplace they, there's nothing they can do on lake nip except go sit in the parking lot I think we can all, I think we can all agree they don't they don't care about that. They just Yeah, but I mean I think that's right. something that you know we could really advocate for is you that's know good, yes. you know, walking paths or there's a yes. I noticed there's a gym, a clubhouse, which I assume is some sort of a gym, um the proper the par the condos, the apartments that are there now. But I mean these are you know an over 55 community. So the Bridgewater um pickleball courts are packed. You can't get a space over there. So why don't they put some pickleball courts or something in for, you know, in this community that so they're not totally using town amenities when they're bringing all these people in when they've got all this acreage there. It's and it, yeah, I agree 100% and I think that that is something that happens all the time in negotiations with the town. Um and you know, I do think we should advocate for you know, that programmable open space, like you're mentioning between like playgrounds, dog parks or anything like that, but also preserved, just naturalized open space, yeah. maybe yeah. trails or something that right. is just more uh, protected, that that could be their, you know, part of the mitigation yeah. is yeah. investing right. in that open space for the residents in that area. I agree hundred percent as well. How, how do we find out about when more meetings Will be held because the only reason about is Eileen at the last minute was able to get a hold of me and I, I happened to be available. But um, you know, like most people, I'm very I'm quite busy um, with with grandchildren, great grandchildren. So you know, it would be nice to know these things ahead of time so we can you know put it in your schedule and know when they're meeting and and have thoughts ahead of time and ideas about what you want to speak about rather than be flat, flat footed about. Uh, you know what you're going to the meeting about, and right, right. Some of yeah. these ideas are fantastic, and we need to have it all down. I mean, as some of the other things that I felt was very important were was the use of our uh, water and our uh, septic system, a sewer system, because there's enough problems with it. If you live down near where I live, and you go down 104 and you smell that uh, sewer system overflowing all the time. Ooh. Is making such that nasty smell. Um, obviously, it's not holding what it needs to hold. And so, what are we doing that about that? And and I asked the guy, and he said, "Oh, well, we're we're in talks about trying to do something to help out, not mm -hmm. help, but in that sort of idea." Right. This there needs to be something more specific, and they should be doing more. But who do we talk to? about making sure things are done, not just talked about. And I mean, it, it's a whole big thing with this. And I, I feel like there were two, there were four of us there. That's yeah. it, yeah. just four of us, yeah. with this craziness. I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sure you do. You you obviously have your, your finger on the pulse of things, but, but the rest of us, you know, we just need, more people need to know. Yeah, um, I mean, basically what we are is, um, we are a bunch of amateurs who yeah. are trying to uh, come up with arguments against a, pro a project with, that's all professionals. You know, I mean, these are people who know these regulations inside and out. Right. And um, with the exception of Nicole, um, you know, none of us really know much about them at all. I mean, actually, I was reverting back to my uh, my my review of projects when I was working for the state of Vermont, like 40 years, 30 years ago. Um, about some of the things we used to look at, like curb cuts and you know vehicle traffic per day, because all of that's you know those questions kept coming up, and I'm somewhat familiar with the analysis that has to be done for some of these. But but for to have somebody who you know, I mean, they've all got they've got staff that are looking at every one of these issues, and and it, you know it's like people like us or the planning board even who who's a lot has a lot more expertise than we do. But yeah, that's that's the you know it's that's the nature of development and um, people trying to fight it. It's just it's an uphill battle. Well, I, I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, just if I can just add my two cents on that, because this is actually my last meeting uh, for the open space, just to share with all of you as well. But um, so I, at the end of this month is when we can, like my my two years ends up ends at this month. So I I know I put my, uh, I just I sent an email and I said I I I need to focus on other things and I want to give someone else a spot um, to to voice their concerns. I'm I'm, I'm always gonna my roots will always be here and. Uh, I always get voice my my concerns for open space and and to maintain that beautiful nature aspect of of our town um, that will never change. But I really do believe that that's the. I mean, we're all concerned citizens, and I think that's we should never underestimate the power of of concerned citizens. And I know Nicole is is on more of the professional side on on this on this uh, in this world, but I really do think that 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 is the that's the main uh, battle, I, I think, for the town of Bridgewater. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just focusing on that development uh, aspect and and making sure we have great trees that that are old growth trees and and having some nature aspect so it improves the livability and the image of our town. So it doesn't just become like another mega development pro uh, you know project that we're seeing in our town now, right? You know all the all the new development that's on towards like the East Bridgewater side of town. Um, I was, I mean, I think we all have dri driven by there and the housing is just like, they're so damn close together. And I'm like, I, I, I mean, I live in a beautiful cul-de-sac and I love it because we have a lot of trees here and it's open space. And I think people need their space and their personal lives. But I really think that that's the big battle. Um, you know, when, when I'm off this committee and everyone meets again, I know I'll preach to the choir, but um, I just wanted to, just, I just want to share that, keep up the good fight with that. And, and I, I think that's the biggest battle is the, is the, is the de development aspect, you know, cause that is the, that's the growth right now. I think, I think we can all agree on that, of course. All right. Yes. So that, I didn't have that on the agenda, Kevin, but yes, I was, I was expecting that you would tell people that you would be getting off. You've been on a long time. Kevin was the sole member of the open space committee for many, many years. Um, and it's, he's been, uh, oh, and he's also been the representative of this committee to the Community Preservation Act committee as well. So um, we need somebody to participate in that committee and it may be me or um, if I can get anybody else interested, it may be someone else, but, but anyway, Kevin, you've done a, you've done a, a long road uh, on this and um, we all appreciate it. It, it's my, up. it's my oh, absolute. Was that a clap, Melissa? That was a clap. <laughs> <laughs> so th thank you, thank you very yeah. much. It, it's it's been it's been a true honor to. I mean, I was the only person on the open space for three whole years. Oh my goodness! You know, I and it, it was even longer than that, really. I, yeah, well, well, I think it was. I think in total, this is my fourth. Uh, this is my fourth term. So I've, I've been on the committee yeah, been, for, yeah, for about eight years yeah. or so, yeah. and um, or give, give or take a, a few months, I think. But because right. uh, it was an ad, it was an ad hoc committee for six months. So um, yeah, a lot has changed, but it's been a, it's been an honor for me to serve and and to be a part of more and part of 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 our community and and to and to meet great people like everyone here on this call and and also on the CPC and just in the town in general. Um, it's, it's, it's made me a better person and I hope I've made other people better in the process as well. And I had an impact. So, but it's been a pure, it's been a real pleasure. And, uh, you know, I just, um, I, I, it, a little tear drops from my cheek when I see all the, all the people on the committee now, it, it really is a heartwarming thing. And I, and I hope more people join and don't be shy. You know, I know some people here are not formally on the committee, but we need more people, and we also need a slot on the on the CPC, yeah. um, which is even more impactful, um, because we have a we have a pretty significant budget, as yeah. well. So I just encourage everyone to put their hat in the in the ring and, and don't be shy. It's it's not as bad as it, or as people th initially think. It's actually really it's actually really it's not fun. Not bad at all. <laughs> it's it's really it's really fun. It's really fun. It's yeah. it's an enjoyable thing. It's a little bit of work, but it's um but the impact in in the in the just the just the positive impacts of it is is well worth it yeah. all right you know thank you kevin
Yep. Good luck in your ongoing endeavors and hope you find time to be on another town committee at some point. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll be around. I, yeah. I'll, you know, if I move out of state, I'll fly back and yeah. I'm not gonna, <laughs> but, you know, we have that, we have that luxury today in the yeah. 21st century, so. <laughs> Okay, so if any of the non-members, if you're um, looking for a role to play, a more defined role, um, think of this committee. So, and CPC, I highly recommend it. Yeah, well, yeah, we have to have a representative of the CPC, but it has to be a member of this committee. They have to, yeah, so, yeah. yes. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right. Sorry, I, I knew I threw that in a little early, but I just That's figured- all right. I, no, it was I, good. I wasn't sure where you wanted to throw it in. I know you wanted a break was, from talking, so. That was a fine segue. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway i mean i think i i i think we where we were nicole sort of was heading it is that yeah this is a long process um maureen i don't know where to get the information i mean I'll, other than um you know i think pat and melissa seem to be on lots of lists more than i'm on really and keep it track of this stuff um that's i mean pat's the first one who sent or the first one that i saw it from um and so I think, yeah, we just, but now, but, but we had heard about the tree committee and Nicole hadn't, you know, so it's, uh, I, I mean, it really takes a whole lot. We can't all be on all these committees. You know, we can't all be at, listening in on the town council and parks and rec and planning board. And very often you pick up information at different committees and that's the only way you find out what's going on, but nobody can be doing it all. So it's really good to have a network that kind of keeps each other informed. And I think we have that with Melissa and, and Pat, um, particularly, you know, members who are not members of the committee, but our um, Pat Neary, I think probably is, uh, you know, the, the award for the best busybody in town in terms of keeping track of things. You know, that's a, that's a compliment, Pat. That's a compliment, you know. <laughs> you're, you're involved in everything. It's like this. Oh, there she is. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure some people feel that way. Yeah, but we don't. We're glad to have you here. Okay, so we, we need more people like that. So yeah, that's good. yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I don't know. I I think all we can do is just keep our eyes open. I mean, I don't really think it's time to think about formulating comments about anything. You know, this is just premature and. I think it's really in the local process that we are going to have a bigger influence anyway. And um, so that's, the, I think that's as far as we can go. Um, the last, uh, does anybody else have anything they want to say about that or the, the, the uh, Lake Shore development issue? Okay. The last thing I wanted to uh, bring up and <laughs> sort of plays into what we're talking about a little bit is um, I know we have a new parks and recreation director, and um, we also have a new park steward, which I didn't know. I had heard the last I had heard, and I don't know who told me this, it had been taken out of the budget. But we do have a park steward. I even had his name written down someplace, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. Oh, yeah, here it is. I do have it. Um, his name is John Hart. And he's working 13 to 19 hours was, this is from Steve Sobel. Um, the Parks and Rec, Rec director's name is Jim Smalls. And he was, the, he was at the golf course, the city golf course prior to coming on as, as Parks and Rec director. But what Steve told me is that um, there's a whole lot of discussion going on about who's, who's going to have jurisdiction over what right now. And so whether like the town, the town parks, for instance, are going to be under the jurisdiction of community and economic development and the CONCOM or whether they're going to go to parks and rec um, is all up in the air. And, you know, Steve, it sounded like Steve's not even sure what he's going to be working on at this point. So I think the, you know, it sounds like the lines of communication within the town are pretty poor. So I think we can only expect them to be worse when it comes to the committees knowing what's going on. Um, I've been trying to find out from, I've been trying to find out, just, I've been trying to locate some minutes for the parks and rec meetings because they have meetings all the time, but there aren't any minutes posted anywhere. So I've emailed Brooke Condon, who's there, because I'm trying to find out if they're, what they're talking about in terms of any of these parks or anything. I did notice that that the um, Parks and Rec Department under open, um, if you click on the parks on their website, it mentions the Scotland Links and Legion Field. 
as the only two parks in town. Right. Um, so, you know, anyway, I, I don't know. I, I, it kind of made me wonder whether Lauren had made any progress in finding out where to post anything, but I think it would probably be hard to make any progress on this town because it sounds like everything is kind of in flux within the, within the department, within the whole town. Um, I, I would imagine that, I didn't know that they hired a park steward. I, I, that was that's news to me. But if, if 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 in fact they have, which which is what sound you know, of course, it's it, I would imagine that once they have a park steward, they'll they you I think you're I think you're on it hundred percent. It's in flux, and they they're trying to form like because they obviously know all the all the different parks in town. But I think oh, they're yeah. trying to integrate right. that yeah. with the with the park steward now. Yeah. They must be working with them with that person to yeah. Yeah, and Brooke Condon sent me an email recently asking what I knew about any of the, the volunteer stewards, and I sent her a response back, and so I, had, I assumed that they were trying to get some inf information together for the new um, park steward, but um, but nobody told me <laughs> that one was hired, you know, and it just, it's, it's just, it's, it's very odd, so we're it's hard it's hard to keep yourself in the loop and I, I but i think that that's true not just for this committee but you know steve feels pretty much that he doesn't know what's going on either so anyway it's it's an ongoing challenge uh, um in city government and all government and probably in all human relations if i can be so <laughs> broad as to <laughs> um, take a look at what we're doing here for us. Oh, that's funny. 6,000 viewpoints, 6,000 foot viewpoints. So, so I don't have anything else. Um, oh, next meeting. I'm going to be out of town on the, the 20, the third Thursday of July. Can people make the 28th, which is the fourth Thursday? Maureen, do you? Uh, I, I don't have my calendar, but I believe that would be much better for me because I'll have out of town guests. Uh, I, I think the week you're talking about. Okay. I think that. Oh, well, how about you? Are you going to be away? Nope, I'm away in early July, so that's better. Oh, okay, so the 28th is good. Okay, all right. Um, oh, then I'll, I'll still attend that meeting as well before the end of the month. Oh, you're not up. It's not July 1st that you. Oh, you. Oh, you said July. Oh, I thought you said June 28th. No, no, I'm no, sorry. July. 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 Oh, yeah. It's, an, it's the end of June. You can come as a member of the public if you'd like, Kevin. <laughs> hey, that might be that might be cool. Yeah. Be, I'm gonna do that actually. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. Um, uh, that's it. Yeah. So, are you going to continue at 7 p.m.? Yeah. Yeah, and I think in July, I think we'll be able to go to in person if we want. <laughs> Yeah, after after the end of the month, we all yeah. the committees vote if we want to do it in person. How do people person feel day. about that? I know you really were looking for it, Maureen, but I think when, that was when you couldn't hear me. What's that? <laughs> I can't. I, I have trouble hearing you. Right. You said, well, I said I, was, I know at one point you really wanted to have in person because you couldn't hear me. Yeah. <laughs> but I hadn't heard you say that anymore, so I thought it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like in person. I, 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 I would like to see what the numbers are as long as the numbers stay down. We don't sit on the each COVID time. numbers, you mean? Yeah, yeah. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. I would love that. I'm meeting in person would be great. Oh, all right. Okay, good. All right. All right. Well, we'll um, assume that we can do that then on the 28th. Um, Yeah, okay. I don't know how to use the town uh, computer system or anything, or they're putting stuff up on the screens, but maybe somebody else will. So, oh, you mean in the room? In the yeah, room? In the room, yeah. Oh, I think, um, I mean, well, I mean, Josh is now the assistant, you know. Yeah, but I, I talked to him about, um, I heard him volunteer to take the minutes for the tree committee meeting, meeting the other day. And so I said, gee, I've never asked for anybody from the town staff to do that. So I asked him tonight when he was setting up this call and he said he was able to do that because it was an afternoon meeting. And yeah. there's only so many, you know, he does the CPC meetings and there's only so, so many town evening meetings that the staff is able to cover. But um, so we can, but anyway, that's kind of what he. Mm. 
I'm sure I'm sure it'll all work out. I'm sure it'll all work yeah, out. Yeah, we'll figure something out. So all right. Anything else for anybody that wants to add? Nope. Just want to say thank you for letting thank you for it's been a pleasure working with all of you yep. and um best We've of luck. Enjoyed in the having future. you, Kevin. Appreciated your input. Thanks, Kevin. Your dedication. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, thank Thanks you. Thanks for holding everything right. down. Good all luck, right, Kevin. Thank you. Yeah, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. I wish you the best of luck, everyone. Thanks. We are adjourned. All right.